In today's painting guide, it's all about realistic stonework. From the towering fortress of Mordor to the mossy greys of every single D&D dungeon, there is no piece of tabletop wargaming scenery more beloved than classic stone brickwork. In this painting guide, we've got a masterclass on realistic stone as we look at four different schemes, exploring the classic greys, dingy dungeon grime, and the bright white of Minas Tirith. All of these schemes follow the same core principles and outline a set of techniques that you can adapt at home to your own scenery. So let's dive into our first scheme, the dungeon grime. In nature, stone doesn't just occur in varying shades of grey. Rock has lots of colour in it, browns and reds and yellow ochres, and the best way to achieve really realistic looking stonework is to bring some of these colours into your paint job. And we're going to be doing that in this scheme with a process called undertoning. This process involves bringing our coloured elements in at the base coat stage, and having those colours in nice and early allows us to layer and blend them so that we get a really fantastic finish for our rock work that has all of the natural varying hues that we see in nature. The dungeon grime is the darkest of our four schemes and as such we're going to prime it with a flat black and then we're going to overbrush it with a dark tan. This layer creates a lovely neutral baseline for all of our coloured undertoning and we're going to apply that overbrush heavily over the entire model leaving some of the black in those recesses so that our shades don't have to do as much work further on in the paint job. So now that our neutral tan baseline is down, we're going to work on our undertoning by bringing in our brighter natural hues. I'm going to use two pigments for this, yellow ochre and burnt sienna, and I'm also going to make a 50-50 mix of those two colours to give me three tones to work with as I bring in my brighter elements. Now I'm going to grab a medium layer brush and just pick out various stones here and there across the stonework with those three colours. There shouldn't be a discernible pattern, we just want different blocks of colour throughout the entire paint job. Some will be the bright yellow, some the darker, and some the 50-50 blend. And don't even bother changing your brushes as you go through this step. That way you get some really nice subtle blends through all of your varying hues. Now when this is finished, it does look quite stark. You've got all these little pops of colour sitting over that neutral tan base. But don't be alarmed, we will be blending these all together later on in the paint job. Up next, we're going to start to bring in a hint of that natural mossy tone that we see in all our grimy dungeons by bringing in a bit of green. Now unlike the undertoning where we picked out individual bricks, this green mossy layer is going to be overbrushed sporadically in different regions of the model. Little clusters of stones will have a slightly green hue, it might be more green down the bottom of one piece of wall and then a little more green up the top of another, make it really random, really sporadic, but just these little pops of dark green which give it a really mossy, grimy feel and they'll blend beautifully into the stonework once it's all washed and dry brushed which is just going to give it another little layer that helps add that realism. So now that our stonework is bristling with all of these coloured undertones, it's time to blend them all together, and we're going to do that with a nice bright bone. This is a lovely blending agent, it's in the same tonal range, you can see we're working in that space of browns and yellows and tans, so it's going to tie everything together, and we're going to dry brush the entire model with this colour, and that'll pick out all of the rays detail, give everything a really lovely pop, so all of the stones will have some beautiful tonal graduation with the deeper rich coloured undertones and then the brighter highlights created by the bone dry brush over the top. You can focus on different areas making it a little heavier and then a little lighter to create some lovely natural variation and you can see already that it's starting to blend together and look a little more uniform. Once that bone is dry, we've got one final dry brush layer, which is just to come in with some white, and we're going to dry brush this in a very uniform direction, streaking our brush from the top of the model down to the bottom. And this is just to create the illusion of sunlight, because it creates some brighter highlights just on the top of our bricks, as if the sun was beaming down on the top of our ruin. This is just a subtle little element that isn't too heavy, just a little hit across these regions, and it just helps sell the realism of this rocky texture. Yeah. So there we can see once the two dry brushes are down, everything is looking really blended and compressed. We can still see all of the various tonal variation, but it's a lot more subtle now. And now what we're going to do is bring in the classic black wash to sink into all of the recessed detail and compress the tonal range of the model, push everything into that dark, grimy space that we want this lovely, grim ruin to finish in. So we're going to pretty much lather this black wash all over the model. You can apply it 
pretty much as heavily as you like depending on how dark you want the stonework to go, how bright you want the undertones to finish. I like to really push mine into a darker space so that it's a really grimy, grimy ruin and uh, those undertones are really subtle. But if you want it to be a little bit more striking and have a little bit more pop, you can just apply either a thinner black wash or only one or two passes so that your black wash doesn't go too dark. Once that washes down, the model really comes alive. Not only do you have the lovely highlights from those dry brushes, but the recessed detail is now really stark and popping, and that stonework is, is much more blended and compressed, and I, I'm really happy with how that's turned out. Now, this particular ruin also has a little bit of metal work on it, so I can go through my little scheme for that, for those of you who have similar evil ruins. Essentially, we just grab ourselves a little bit of lead belcher from the Citadel color range, apply that over all of the grimy stonework, then once that's dry, I'm going to hit it with another pass of Stormhost Silver to really brighten up that decayed metal banding. And then we're going to start to bring in our weathering layers. We'll give it a good coat with Agrax Earthshade all over the uh, stripping and, and the corroded iron. And while that Agrax Earthshade is still wet, I'm going to bring in a huge, huge amount of Typhus Corrosion and apply that pretty much across the entire metal stripping. Now, the reason that we put the Agrax down first is that wet layer of Agrax Earthshade Earthshade allows the typhus corrosion to kind of seep and blend naturally. Otherwise, when it goes down neat, it can create some really stark lines, which do look nice, but we like to have a little bit of that natural blend as well. So we still see a fair amount of that silver coming through, but it's just essentially creating a filter over that metallic layer with the rusty, grimy typhus corrosion. It's a fantastic technical paint for all sorts of iron banding and evil murky weathering. Our final three schemes in this Stonework Masterclass are going to focus on the castle wall space, that graduated scheme of greys. We're going to look at a dark grey, a mid-light grey, and then a bright white stonework as well. And we're going to achieve that by just varying our base coat and the way that we blend the undertones with our dry brushing. I've got three different primers that I'll be using for each of these schemes. I've got a bright white and a light grey from rust and then a dark charcoal in my foam safe floral primer. I'll be priming each of these walls with my foam safe primer first to make sure they're nice and sealed so that the normal spray paints don't damage any of the surface of my foam. If you don't have any foam safe aerosols to hand, you can easily pre-prime this with either an airbrush, paint it by hand, or even seal it with something like Mod Podge before you put your normal spray paints down. So up first is the brightest of the schemes with our white stonework. I've got my primer down and now it's into our undertoning. I'm going to start off with an earthy brown, which might seem like a really stark contrast to our bright white prime, but it's going to be a really lovely undertone for some of our rocky layers. And what I'm going to do is just pick out a few bricks here and there on my front surface, pick out some of the smaller bricks on the battlements, as well as the stuff on the top of the rampart, and make sure you've got a different spread and you're not repeating any geometric pattern. Have a couple of clusters together, some single bricks spread out, uh, just yeah, put them all over the place with no visible order. Then I'm going to move on to a darker gray. This is sort of like a dark, almost blue gray, and I'm going to apply the exact same process. We need to make sure with all of these layers that we're getting a smooth, even coverage that doesn't have any brush strokes, uh, but don't be afraid to sort of apply a thinner layer that allows the translucency of the white prime to come through, and you can make some a little bit darker. So even within your gray layer and your brown layer, you're getting a little bit of variation between your bricks. You also notice that I'm not even bothering to change brush between these layers, because if I get a few layers that or a few bricks that are mixed between the two colors that's totally fine it's just more variation the third and final step for this layer is to grab a really light gray it's like a fortress gray uh, and we're going to do the exact same technique picking out quite a few bricks all over the place and bringing a nice light gray into the space and that way we've got quite a mottled look of stonework here you can see it looks really stark it looks really contrasty uh, but there's definitely a lot of bricks picked out here in different colors now what we're going to do is blend all of those bricks together but keep the undertoning as the lower shades the recessed shades of these brick details so we're going to do that by grabbing that same light gray that we just used and dry brushing or heavily over brushing over the darker gray and brown tiles so i'm going to take most of my paint off my brush but not as much as i would 
would if, if I was dry brushing, and then move in really vigorous circular motions over all of those bricks that have been undertoned. And that will start to bring the mid-tones of those bricks back into the grey-white scheme, but we can see that they feel like they're a different colour. They've got those undertones underneath, uh, which makes those bricks look subtly different. The next step is to grab a slightly larger brush, and I'm going to dry brush the entire surface of the wall with a really bright, crisp white. And that blends all of the grey dry brushed areas, it picks out all of those undertoned in light grey bricks and gives them a subtle white highlight, and it also kind of crisps up the bright prime of the bricks that are still white and gives them a natural highlight as well. Once these two dry brushes have gone down, you can really see that the stone variation is a lot more subdued, but it is still quite noticeable. But as we bring in our wash, that's all going to knock together, and we're just going to end up with a really realistic modelled looking stone that looks like it was made from different chunks of stone, and it isn't a big block of foam that's been carved and painted. So our first step for our washes is to bring in a light black wash, and we're going to wash the entire surface of the model. I paint this standing up, I don't sort of lie it down and paint the surface. We're going to paint this as it stands because that allows the wash to run uh, across the foam surface just like rainwater would, just like grime would build up. And that's a really important principle when you're painting your stonework because that allows you to get some fantastic realistic looking washes and stonework weathered effects. So what we're doing here is putting a, a light black wash all over the stone and then while that's still wet, we're going to come back in with a darker black wash and just hit little areas, just darken up different regions. Uh, and that way the light wash that's down will act as a nice medium so that as we put darker wash on it doesn't kind of make a really hard border, it blends out into the medium of the lighter wash so we get lovely graduation of tone but we can really focus on some areas of recessed detail. So getting in and around all of the crenellation and various grout lines, if there's big cracks and a really nice detailed section you'd like to focus on, we'll hit that with some darker wash and then as we go we'll step up to kind of an even darker wash and keeping this all all in one big wet worked layer, we're going to start to make some really nice kind of grime runs going down the front surface of the wall by going up to our archway beams and then just dropping a whole bunch of pigment and letting it run down the surface of the wall and doing the same all the way across, creating almost like a streak like effect, like all the rain and grime over the years has been washing off those battlements and running down the archways and then running down the surface of the wall. And it's a subtle effect, once it all dries, it kind of fuses together but it gives you some really lovely natural variation that just makes the stonework sing and this is my absolute favorite layer because out of nowhere all of the paintwork and all of the carving it just suddenly turns to stone it just looks like realistic stonework out of nowhere all of the detail pops and all of a sudden you feel like you're an absolute terrain making god so once all of those washes are dry, you'll see that it looks absolutely fantastic. We've got lovely, rich detail showing through and a fantastic finished stonework. And now we're going to do one last little detail, and that's just to bring in some green wash, put that in various kind of nooks and crevices, like a little bit of moss or mildew growing on the stone, just to really hint at the age and, and bring a little bit of extra colour and character into the stonework. Now we're going to move on to our light grey scheme, which is the middling of our three grey schemes. And we're going to have a look at how we adapt those exact same techniques from the bright white scheme into different tones of grey and how we can shift and adjust ever so slightly to create some really lovely results. So as always I've given this a nice prime using the Rust-Oleum light grey this time and that's going to be our starting point and now we're going to move into our undertoning. We're going to be working with the exact same colours as our last scheme. We've got the dark blue grey, the darker brown, the bright white and that pure light grey and we're going to be undertoning with those paints just like before. We'll start off with the dark blue grey and we're going to pick out various tiles here and there but as you'll notice as we work darker and darker we've got darker base tones that we're starting from we can start to use more and more of an undertone because there is less contrast between our initial prime and our undertone so it gives us the opportunity to create lots and lots of variation so I'm going to put quite a bit of this dark grey all around the place and then we'll move on to our dark brown and repeat the same process I really like to mix up these two colours a little bit particularly as we start to get darker in schemes and do some blends between the dark brown and the dark blue grey to create even more variation and then we'll bring in our light grey as the final undertone and you'll notice that this is very subtle there's not much contrast here between that layer and the prime but it's still worth putting down because it's just a little shade different and it works really nicely when we get into our blending stages 
With our three undertones down, you can already see there's a lot less contrast between those tones and our initial prime than there was in the first paint job. And you'll also notice that because we've got that freedom, I've gone a little bit heavier on some of the battlements, really changing the hue of those large top battlement blocks, which creates a nice effect when they're blended all together. Our first step for blending here is a little different. We're bringing in that same light gray, but instead of just applying it over the undertoned blocks, I'm actually going to dry brush the entire block here. And the reason for that is this is going to be our primary blending layer because this tone is much closer to our prime rather than in the first paint job the white was our final blending layer or primary blending layer because that was the closest to our prime so whatever paint job or whatever prime you've gone for which is kind of the finished result that you're aiming for that's what you want your primary dry brush blend to be so we're going to dry brush heavily over all of these undertone blocks and the entire wall piece and then once that dry brush is down nice and heavy get that lovely sub subdued undertone so that there's much less contrast, then we'll bring in our white. And on this paint job, that white layer is just going to be a little finishing dry brush, just little bits here and there. You can do some vertical elements to try and create the illusion of sunlight streaking from the top to the bottom. You can focus a little more on the battlements or pick out a few areas, but this dry brush layer is for accents, not for your overall highlight profile. So now that those dry brush blends are down, we can see that the stonework's really coming together. The hues are nice and subdued in those undertones, and it's really starting to blend. But now we're going to bring in our wash to crunch everything together and really accentuate the beautiful recessed detail of this sculpt. So I'm going to bring in the same process as I did in the last scheme, where I bring in a lighter black wash, put that over the entire model, and then bring in a darker wash to try and accent some various points. Maybe I want grime running down the face of the rock face, or I want to accentuate some beautiful recessed details that have been sculpted in but I will say that you do need to have a little bit of a darker wash here for that accent wash because of course as your tones get darker uh, if you want to achieve more contrast you need to kind of exaggerate some of that emphasis a little bit more so you can darken up that second wash and then once that wash is all applied you're going to have some absolutely beautiful looking stone walls. So that is our light gray wall section done. And all we did was adapted our techniques just a little bit to get a fantastic result. We changed the initial prior, we made that a little bit darker, and then we changed the way that we applied our blending dry brushes to make sure that those undertones turned into a really nice uniform rock face with some lovely varying hues underneath. And for our fourth and final scheme, the darkest gray, I've done the exact same thing here. I started with another darker prime, this time going for a charcoal gray to get that really lovely lovely dark Helm's Deep looking grey and then I put in some darker more heavier faving undertones and then did a little bit of the same application with our dry brushing to make sure that those blended together nicely, darkened my washes up even a little bit more to make sure that we got that contrast in there and then just for a spot of difference I actually came in and did a little bit of dry brushing after the wash had dried uh, just to create a few little bright spots, a little bit of variation because it's a very dark wall and you want to up that contrast a bit but if you are doing any dry dry brushing after your wash stage, make sure you're very, very light-handed, otherwise you can accidentally ruin the finished effect of the wall. And there we have four very easy stone schemes that look absolutely fantastic with a high level of realism. So four great schemes that look quite realistic, but more importantly, a process and some techniques that you guys can adapt at home to whatever scheme you like. You can mix up the base tone, change the undertones, change the way you blend it. Either way, you're gonna get some really great results. And when I started doing this, it really upskilled my terrain making ability. You know, there's nothing worse than sculpting for hours and hours and hours, and then painting up this piece that you've made and having the finished products really kind of, you know, feel subpar and not meet your lofty goals when you set out on the quest of terrain making. So yeah, when I started doing this painting method, I was getting a much better finished product, which was really exciting. If you guys are going to use this method to paint up any stuff, I'd love to see it. Make sure you uh, jump on over to our Facebook page and post up some photos. I've got that linked down in the description below. This whole tutorial came about because I've been working on our Minas Tirith project. I'll link the video for that up there. It's essentially a big community build where everyone in my local area, or Australia essentially, is working on little chunks of the massive Minas Tirith board in isolation. And then after all this COVID-19, 
main stuff. We're going to bring it all together and have a massive terrain board and a huge game to play on. But while I was painting my Minas Tirith, getting all these guides out, I just couldn't nail the stonework. Uh, it took me like five or six different recipes to get it happening, which of course meant that I had five or six different recipes for cool sort of different bits of stonework and different schemes. I had half of it filmed anyway, so I thought I'd throw it together for you guys into this sort of masterclass format. So if you like this kind of format on these sort of, you know, terrain skill focused stuff, feel free to let me know down in the comments. And if you are enjoying everything that I'm doing here on the channel, feel free to head on over to my Patreon and consider supporting me without the boys and girls on Patreon. None of this will be possible. Thank you so much to all of them, and I will see you next time right here on Zorpa Zorp Gaming. Cheers, guys.